Hello, thank you for joining us. Uh, this will not be an, a regular webinar. We want to have your opinion and understand what's living in your operations and day-to-day -day business. So let's let's start with a question and have this thing a bit more interactive. Maybe some of you know already the tool Mentimeter. So I would like to invite you to take your smartphone now and surf to www.menti.com. There you will see an opening screen where you have, are asked to insert a code. I would like to, you to join and fill out the code 93471781, the way it's uh, presented on the screen. This will be an, an, an interesting uh, interactivity. Once you've entered the Menti, you will see that you get a question presented. Um, you can fill out three words, and we would like you to submit the, whatever happening in your brain at this moment when you see the question. What is the main concern you have in your breweries operations today? I know there's a time, time delay between me saying this and having you reply. So, ah, we see the first uh, results already. Great. So let's give it a minute and uh, see what's, what's coming up. I'm glad to see water is some of the concerns today, and uh, that's why we're here. Uh, let's see what, who else has an idea of what comes up with, uh, with the topic. Luckily, today it's a rainy day in Belgium, so instead of having drought for the next for the last two months, uh, this session has ended, so we, we can replenish our uh, water table levels. Anyway, if uh, users are, are not entering, we can we can uh, go to what we see. Ah, electricity. Indeed, the cost of energy is is boosting, and uh, that makes it very hard to to keep operations going. Water again, also grain. Yeah, of course, with the war in uh, Ukraine, it's uh, it may be difficult. High COD, so increased uh, pollution level in the wastewater. Good to know that as well. Let's see what we come up with. Um, just uh, 30 more seconds, and, uh, and then we go back to the presentation. Energy, gas, indeed. Gas is becoming far more expensive, three times increase in price versus last year. So this has a clear impact. And recently, that leads also to a lack of CO2. Well, let's let's get back to the to the presentation. Thank you for sharing this information. It's very useful to get your inputs and see what we can do with it. Um, over the last few months, I've I've been talking to many of you and listening. And okay, the main issue that we hear at this moment, last week, this week, is the lack of CO2 to the brewers. Uh, CO2 is a byproduct of fertilizer production out of natural gas. But of course, if the natural gas is such a scarce resource, fertilizer production is ended, which leads to a lack of CO2 all over the world, US, Europe, wherever you go. So that's one. We've also noted that many of you had, after the pandemic, an increased demand for beer, consumers going back to the bars and uh, Many had also taken down the workforce to a lower level and now have to pick it up and that might be a predicament to get these people back. Very far uh, topic that we see worldwide happening is this urgent need to reduce the eco footprint. Look at what's happening in Mexico. If you hear that Constellation brand had invested 1.4 billion US dollar in the Mexicali 20 million hectoliter brewery that they were building. It was nearly finished when they got the order to relocate the whole brewery to Veracruz, where there's more water available. That's, that's insane. Same thing happening for breweries in Nuevo León, in the north of Mexico, Monterrey area, where they are forced to stop expansion plans, cannot expand any further, and have to start reusing. 
So there's a urgent need there for the reduction of the eco footprint. More close to home, we see that governments and entities, environmental entities, like even in South America, uh, are pushing for a, a compliance with the discharge norms far more than in the past. So there's more control and there's a stricter legislation. And then we've also seen higher uh, efficiency needs for breweries, like uh, like here in Belgium, where semi-arid areas, uh, the water cannot be used that abundant as uh, it used to be. So what is Waterloo bringing to the table for that? As you may know, those who know us already know that we were born as wastewater treatment uh, specialists for breweries, like with, uh, with Rins, the, the founder of Waterloo, building the first ever unitank at Stella Artois Leuven. So we've built over 200 plants worldwide now for brewers. And thanks to our anaerobic technology and biogas desulfurization technology, we've been generating renewable energy for breweries worldwide. And we keep doing so. Apart from that, lately we are far more being specialized in treating water as well for the brewery, so brew water, service water, and others. So we're, we're now dealing with the brewers front to end, inlet to outlet. And this for the last uh, 10 years. And hot topic is, of course, the water recovery plants. The last 10 years, we've, we've built several plants here in Belgium, but also further South Africa and uh, other parts of the world. Water recovery is hot. Of course, for the brewers, we don't leave you be with the, the issues of having excess sludge. We have these technologies as well and make sure that none of these treatments generate odor for the neighbors. Then another topic that has been new was basically during the pandemic, we saw that even 30% of you, the smaller brewers, were having the risk of imminent bankruptcy. So it's not only an eco footprint issue, but it may turn into a financial problem as well. With this in mind, I have another question for you. So please go back to your smartphone, go back to Menti, and we can go to the next, next question. I'd love to share that with you. Let me take a print screen of this first. Uh, it's always good as a reference uh, for future use. And then go to the next slide. So please uh, join us in uh, this easy poll. Is, is financing a solution uh, wastewater, water recovery, uh, something that might be of interest for you. I'd like to know what is your opinion. So we already have one yes and one maybe in the future. That's, that's uh, has already some potential, even more. Yes. Nobody is saying no for now. That's, uh, that's interesting. Because basically in this webinar, we have something new to present in line with this question. So uh, let's, uh, let's wait a second and, and see what else comes up. Maybe a giant brewery group says no, but uh, let's find out. Uh, let's give this uh, another 30 seconds and, uh, and get, get on with uh, the presentation. Maybe in the future, fine. We'll see what, uh, what comes up. All right. Thank you for, for uh, joining us in this exercise. It's quite a fun tool, as, <laughs> if I say it myself. So uh, today, in line with this financing uh, issues that may cause bankruptcy for brewers, we have we are here to present our latest offering to the market, brewery market. These are the CapEx free water solutions. We've named them water lease. So please enjoy the ride while we walk you through. What is it? Basically, it's, it's a matter of installing flexible infrastructure 
as an extra add-on to your existing infrastructure. You can uh, take it temporarily or fixed or permanent. By doing so with a uh, finance solution, we can unfreeze your investment money. So you're not blocking your uh, means in a wastewater or water treatment plant. And then the new thing about it is that we've created bottom of box solutions, modular solutions who come in containerized or in mobile units that can be easily transported and installed on site and taken away after a certain rental period. These are pre-designed by our engineering team, pre-assembled in our workshop, pre-tested so everything runs smooth once it gets to site and it's only plug and play. The good thing about it is our automation is also very advanced so we can seamlessly integrate your existing assets and turn it into one single operation. And then the latest development, of course, is including these modular solutions for MBR ready for the next step, water reuse plant with our own high recovery reverse osmosis systems. As you may know, we have a license of the Bons CCRO technology, which we gladly apply uh, for your operations. We also include anaerobic technology, so you can instantly harvest biogas, renting an anaerobic system to your, to your plant's operation. At this moment, biogas has a bit the same value as natural gas, so whether you buy natural gas or biogas, it's quite the same. So it, it's worth taking that, uh, taking a deeper look at it. So how do we do that? Do we do that only for greenfield plants? Yes, we can, but we can also do that for brownfield plants. So you don't have to have a, a full naked field to get on with it. We can have a greenfield plant where you install only these boxes and have a typical 10 year contract. But most of you have an installation already, so we can refurbish an existing plant or add on an existing plant and add the Waterloo box modular solutions to it. As an alternative, we can also generate even more capital for you, uh, taking over the assets from you. So in a sale, sale and lease back operation. So how do we do this? Well, we can either do that with installing fixed assets or mobile assets or even a combination. So going for pure mobile units, this means fast track, we can get to a rental contract pretty fast. If you go for fixed assets, of course, first you need to have a joint venture operation started, so special purpose vehicle, and get that fixed installation built. In a hybrid solution, we would take care of the mobile assets in a rental contract, and you only have to invest in a small light capex, let's say a technical building or some slabs that have to be built on site. Okay, this sounds all fantastic and new, but uh, is this theoret theoretical or have we done this before? Uh, the good thing is we have done this before. So let me share you what we're doing for Martin's Brewery in Belgium. So this was our first uh, yeah, water lease project. Who are these guys? Let's say the Martens Brewery is a very old brewery, family brewery in Limburg, close to Dutch border. It's uh, owned since 1758 in Bocholt-Kalille. Still family owned, uh, next generation. And recently Jan Martens bought the shares of his brother Holtz, and is now sole owner of that uh, brewery. His kids are entering the the, the production and the, the management of the team. So it's going continue family owned, but there's now also an external uh, CEO inside. Did you know, nobody knows the name Martus Brewery, but they have the second largest brewery in Belgium. It's huge. After the Stellarfa, they're, they're the second. With 3.4 million hectoliter per year production that they had prior to the pandemic. And and they do have some uh, fantastic technologies on board. It's a continuous brew process that they have, which 
leads to a very fine water footprint. They produce beer at 1.8 hectoliter per hectoliter, which is already world class. So it's a state of the art brewery and they have an expansion plan to go to 4.5 million hectoliters. This is uh, quite a challenge for them. And let's say, let's have a look at their existing wastewater treatment situation because, okay, the, the, the brewery itself is a state of the art, but if, when we had a look at the wastewater treatment plant, it was not state of the art. It, uh, it had, uh, let's say, some ancillary equipment outdated. It was overloaded because of the overproduction that they had. The infrastructure did not allow for recovery of treated wastewater. And of course, the main issue with it was that for the brewery to expand to 4.5 million hectoliters, it was imperative for the license to recover water so that there was no, no possibility to expand that brewery unless they would start recovering water. So Jan Martes set himself some targets. First of all, the future brewery should discharge within norms or they would be shut down. Second thing is the obligation to recover water. He was a firm believer that indeed he needed to do that and not just a little bit, but massive. He wanted as a personal strategy to lower the water footprint from the 1.8 to even 1.2. 1.2 is world class. That's nobody does better. With these increasing electricity prices and gas prices, of course, there was a, a big target to recover as much as biogas possible to go to the boilers. And then, if he could do all this without spending capex, in that wastewater treatment plant, but keep that to buy the shares of his brother and expand the, the brewery. He was very interested in. So he knew it, it was quite a challenge and quite some parts to be fitted together. So he chose to get an experienced water partner on board. This is where we came in. So that's that's fantastic that they chose us. We will explain why. Uh, the water lease was offered to the Martes Brewery and let me show you what we've added to their existing wastewater treatment. So all of these blocks that we're adding are all water loop box, modular, mobile plug and play units. First of all, for the recovery of the biogas, we're installing our new, brand new anaerobic tower solution. We add the biogas desulfurization, the bio scrubber technology that we had previously named Belgas, which we call now Biotin Bioscrubber, and uh, sending this biogas back to the boilers. We're also adding containerized MBR to get the wastewater treated further to be prepared for reuse in the next step. That's our high recovery reverse osmosis in the same modular box. To get the most biogas out of that anaerobic tower, the wastewater needed to be heated. And Jan Martes wanted to process water back to his brewery, cool down, so at uh, below 20 degrees. So we added these uh, systems as well. So this is a, a view of the layout, the way it will be built. So you see the existing tanks of the picture previously, and you see the, the big uh, reservoir that's aerobic a tank and a calamity tank. We will add on the big, let's see, towers, that's our anaerobic towers that you will see here with the internal recirculation. You see the biotin scrubber in the front. You see the MBR, Lucas MBR systems next to them. Within the CAPEX light, Martus only had to construct a small technical building to fit in the high recovery rate reverse osmosis kits. On top of the building, you see the cooling towers. And next to it, we foresee space to make it a CHP. Also a portable biogas balloon could be added. You see the flare 
So this is the, the setup of the Waterloo boxes next to that existing asset. He wanted to get an experienced water player on board, but he didn't want to give it all out of his hands. We respect that, so we offered him to cooperate the plan. So instead of bringing in our own people, which we can, we have these uh, process engineers available to do that, uh, we chose to cooperate on the long term with them. So what, what's the result, what will be the result of that impact? So the brewery will be able to expand, get the license and can go to the 4.5 million hectoliter. The great thing is currently not recovering water at all and will go to an average 85% and then peak even 90% water recovery out of that. So where at present at peak loads, the brewery was overloading discharge, so out of the, the, the permit with too much water discharge, they will go down to maximum 600 cubes a day. So that's less than one third of the limit that they can have. So that's, that's amazing. That's a fantastic result. I'll let you be the judge of that, of course. Uh, that's why we'll have a Q&A uh, later. So what will be in it for Martha's Brewery in the next 10 years? First of all, okay, there's only the CapEx light civils that Martha's has to do and buy and, and uh, install. Then in exchange for that, he gets the water recovery with the water box assets, keeps his own operators. We will train these new operators in the new technologies because they did not have anaerobic technology. They did not have water recovery technology. There was no uh, knowledge of, over biogas desulfurization and CHP. So we will come in with our service level agreement. During 10 years, we will assist them. First of all, they have our uh, cloud-based operations monitoring tool, the Smart Lab. They will have 24-7 help desk where they can have, through the Smart Lab, chat functions and direct calls with our process engineers to give assistance to these new operations. And monthly, we will come on site to give them process assistance and uh, see how it's going. What do we get in exchange? A long-term leasing contract. So over 10 years, uh, Martha's Brewery pays a fixed monthly fee. And then at the end of the 10 years, has the option to buy back these assets. So they can choose whether to keep it in a rental and refresh it or take it up. So we we asked him why did he choose for water? No? And basically he, he said it's also in the Aquarama magazine that at his brewery he had a complex technical problem, and basically it was thanks to Waterloo's sophisticated proposal an experience and tailor-made uh, solution that they chose for us as their partner. Because we at Waterloo know that every drop counts, that's why we've included water as a service in our portfolio of uh, offerings, where we share our know-how and give you a tailor-made solution that fits for you and not just something uh, off the shelf. And by that, we can help you reduce your water footprint and turn your brewery into a sustainable brewery. And all this without spending capex. So let's, let's discuss this. Uh, well, this is a sort of one-way conversation. Um, we'd like to know your situation better and see how we can help you. Uh, same way we helped Martha's Brewery. We're offering the same solutions in, in Ghana, South Africa, so it's not it's not limited to Belgium. So let's have a talk. You see here the, that we, next week we'll be at Drinktech. So please visit, pass by, and we kindly ask you to uh, schedule a meeting in the Calendly link that you see on the screen. And it's also I think my colleague has uh, put it in the chat function, so you can click on it and uh, get uh, a nice 
instant view on my agenda. Of course, there's still the old way. You can call me, uh, send me an email, and, uh, and you can meet up afterwards. But next week, I'll be in Munich. All right, thank you for assisting us. Let's, uh, let's now go to the questions and answer session. Uh, you see on your go to webinar, you see this uh, same uh, block with a question mark in the, in the we call it the, <laughs> the text, text balloon. And then you can put in your question. All right. Let's see what we got. I'll give you a, a, a minute to phrase your questions in the in the question uh, tab, and uh, then we'll straight go to to the answer. We <laughs> see. I saw a question coming for Menti. What was the code for Menti? Uh, maybe uh, you saw it on, on the screen afterwards. Okay, let's uh, let's start with the first question. It's uh, how long does it take to set up this Waterloo box solution? Question from uh, France in uh, Monsieur Thomas. Let's uh, let's see what uh, what how do we interpret that? How long does it take to set up this Waterloo box solution? So let's say the the Waterloo box are pre-engineered, so can be instantly produced. So the only thing that takes us from getting to a rental of such a, a, a containerized solution is basically get to an agreement contract, a proposal of course, and then produce it and put it on site. So Let's say within eight, nine months, you can have the, the module on site. Then we have a question from uh, Jeff out of the UK. What is the smallest size brewery Waterloo is willing to offer this financing solution? Ah, that's an interesting question indeed, because we did this now for 3.2, uh, 3.4 million hectoliters going to 4.5. But uh, we have these containerized solutions that can be applied already for, for smaller systems, smaller breweries as well. Let's say the minimum threshold will be about 100,000 uh, hectoliter. All right, thank you for that question. And then, what are the first steps to come to a water as a service proposal out of uh, Johan, out of Holland, okay. The first steps to come to a water is a service proposal. Um, if I get it right, it, the whole process would start you contacting us. We asking for characteristics of your wastewater treatment or your water treatment plant, whichever asset you wish to investigate uh, the, the possibility to have a finance solution. We have an analysis on the technical feasibility first. Uh, Let's say that we make a mass balance technical offer and then turn that into a, a budgetary proposal where we can say, okay, we can offer this and it may cost per month or per cube treated uh, this amount. If this is to your liking, we can start going into detail. We, we can sign a letter of intent and say, okay, if we reach these numbers, we can go to a contract or we have a paid study where we go in depth and do the engineering to come to the solution and fix the values and then make a, a firm proposal and turn that into a leasing contract and get started. So this whole process of analyzing your data to finalizing a contract, there's also some time needed to investigate the financial strength of the brewery. So let's, let's say this whole process may take up to six months. Okay, then we have another question from Christian in Germany. Where can the recycled water be used? Uh -huh. the, the great thing is we produce water that is drinkable, with high standards. We can even turn it into USP grade, high, uh, high purity uh, water if needed. So it, 
in theory you can produce the water uh, as you want mostly in brewery sector it's being used as service water so not product water so we we break down the the water consumption to the minimum but let's say if, if uh, martis is going to 1.2 hectoliter per hectoliter beer the 1.2 hectoliter will be well water coming out of the ground and be the natural uh, beer water without coming from the recovery part there's still so much water needed in the brewery operations that the service water can be recycled indefinitely. I hope this, uh, this helps. Okay, um, any other questions? Uh, not for now, this seems to be it. All right, thank you for this. And uh, we'd love to take this uh, discussion personal. And see you in Drink Tech or uh, in Belgium or wherever you are. And, uh, all right, then I will close this webinar now and hope to see you see you soon for the next one. Bye.